does it get any more good old days than like Super Mario Kart and Michael Jordan dunks? Come on. That's the good old days right there. Uh, Nate, uh, that, that video Nate made, it's like, it's like my, my whole life just flashed before my eyes. That's what it is. Um, church, how are you? Are you good? We are packed in this place. If you have social anxiety issues, I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> my goodness. It's like the, you know, the gym in January. The church in January, you know what I mean? It's like, we haven't been to church for a while. We should go. It's January. I love it. I don't say that as like anything other than I'm glad that you're here. And uh, if you're new, so pumped that you're here. Welcome to church. Um, I, I just loved having you guys like, I mean, you guys look good. When, when like, you are walking in, I just was like, you guys look good. And during the music, you didn't sing real great, but you tried, you know, like you gave it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but you sang great. Every, you guys look great. And like I said, if you're new, I'm glad you're here. My name is Joel. I have the honor of my life to be the campus pastor here. And um, if you're watching online right now, we love that you're hanging out, watching with us. Uh, if you're in the overflow right now, I don't know if we got any overflows. Any overflows out there? Love overflow, okay. So can we just show some love to our first-timers, onliners, and overflowers out there? I love it. All right, hey, here's how I want to start out today. Um, I, I need you to go back and remember elementary school you. Now, for some of you, this is going to be a challenge and some of you don't know where you, you can't even remember where you parked out there in the parking lot, okay? <laughs> so remembering back like 70 years, it's not going to be in high def, but just do your best to remember back to when you were in elementary school. And I'm curious, how many of you can remember what you wanted to be when you grew up, when you were in elementary school? Who remembers some things you wanted to be? Okay, now if you're kind of new here, I like to talk to y'all. So somebody just tell me what you wanted to be. Let's just chat about it. A teacher? Did you become a teacher? You did. Hey, boom. Oh, you didn't. Sorry, I heard that wrong. Um, wanted to be a teacher? What else? What else? Astronaut? Whoa, yes, astronaut. Everybody in the 80s wanted to be an astronaut. I don't, I don't know if you're an 80s kid. You kind of look like it, all right? So, yeah, there you go. Um, what else? What else? What? <laughs> He said a mob hitman. Listen, I'm, listen, I'm not going to take any more information from you. <laughs> That's too much information. Um, let me just move on to what I wanted to be. We're all scared of you. All right, we'll put you on our security team, by the way. <laughs> when I was in elementary, you can't make this stuff up. Um, when I was in elementary school, I wanted to be a professional football player. Huh. And listen, this should, this, why shouldn't this be in the NFL? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who's going to get past like 40-year-old, you know, skinny jean Joel? Okay, like intimidation. Um, the reason I wanted to be a professional football player is because when I was a, a kid, one Christmas, I got a San Francisco 49ers jersey. Huh which they did pretty well yesterday, by the way. Um, now, maybe you're like, well, I didn't know you were a 49ers fan. I'm not. But that Christmas, I think, like, at the Roses Department Store, Niners jerseys were on sale. And my family, Santa was on a budget, okay? So I got a Niners jersey. Listen, when I would put that Niners jersey on, I was like, I'm going to be in the NFL. The, whoever's in charge of the NFL, they're going to be calling me. Anytime. Like, there's no doubt. And I had seen that Disney movie, The Little Giants. <sighs> I was probably a full 48 pounds at this time. I was going to be in the NFL, people. Like, I was ready. I thought it was possible I was going to be in the NFL. And I didn't make it, by the way. <laughs> but when I was a kid, I thought, man, I can, I can be anything. Now, I don't know if you know this, but kids don't really want to be in the NFL anymore. Okay, it's too dangerous or something. I don't know. But you know what the number one thing that kids want to be is? A YouTuber, a YouTuber. That's it. Listen, my kids, 
they think they're on YouTube. They take my phone every day and they start filming themselves. Like my daughter, Nora, she'll start filming herself on my phone and she'll be like, hey, YouTube channel, this is Nora's channel. If you like what you see, you know, smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. She's like saying all this stuff. And I watch these videos later. I'm like, this, this, this is my, this is not YouTube. This is my phone. Okay. Like you don't have any subscribers and I don't have any data on my phone. Would you quit with my phone? But my kids are 100% sure they are successful YouTubers. And my kids think they can, they can do anything. Kind of like I thought when I had my, my Niners jersey. And my boy Nixon, his, his motto, and he, he's been saying this for years. His motto is, Daddy, anything's possible. Everybody say, anything's possible. That's Nixon's motto. So let me just kind of tell you some of the things that Nixon wants to be when he grows up. And remember, anything's possible. I wrote down a list of what he said this week he wanted to be. He wants to be a YouTuber, a police officer, an FBI agent, a bodybuilder, a race car driver, a crocodile catcher, (laughs) rich, I'm like, get it, son, and a professional tree cutter. All, he wants to do all this all, this is not like, hey, let me pick one. All simultaneously, he wants to do these things. Now, let me tell you how he got like to be, wanted to be a professional tree cutter. Let me tell you how that made the cut. <clears throat> one day we're pulling into our neighborhood and there's this professional tree cutter and he's in the, he's in the top of a t- tree. Have you seen these psychopaths? <laughs> he like somehow like coconut shimmied up this tree, like 75 feet in the air. He's got a chainsaw filled with gasoline while he's in the tree. He, he's like, he starts cutting the tree down while he's in the tree. You, listen, that's the biggest piece of stupid I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> that sounds way too dangerous to me. I'm, I'm 40. The most dangerous thing I do at this point is walk to the bathroom in the middle of the night in the dark. <laughs> that is me living on the edge. I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm going in the dark. Climbed up a tree. Listen, I climbed trees when I was little, all right? But somewhere between my childhood and my hair loss, like, I, I don't want to do it. And so we, we, we're pulling in the neighborhood. This guy, is he's higher in the tree than the entire state of Colorado. He is high up in the tree. Some of you get that later. Anyway, he's, he's cutting the tree while he's in it. And Nixon says, Daddy, that's what I want to be. And I'm like, you can't be that, son. And he said, anything's possible, Daddy. And I thought about like 10-year-old me with my Niners jersey, and I thought, anything's possible. Everybody say, anything's possible. possible. Listen, I think that story says a lot about us. Like when we're kids, we think we can be anything. We can do anything, go anywhere. We think we're never going to lose our hair. (laughs) The good old days, okay? But then... We get old, and we donate our hair to science, you know, and our knees make cracking noises. Let me see if I can do it. Just everybody be quiet. No, it didn't do it. Old knees. We get old. And, and, and even more than those things, you know, as we age up, life beats us up disappointments stack up, and somehow we move from I can to I can't. We go from anything's possible to never going to happen. And, and so we all, we kind of get a bad case of the I can'ts. And, and here's what, you know, here's what the I can'ts sound like. Like, I can't be happy. I can't beat the addiction. I can't find the career that I love. Speaking of love, I can't find a date. I can't even find the TV remote right now. (laughs) I can't, you know, get in shape. I can't pay these debts off. I I can't not worry about every single thing. I I can't with these kids. Come on, parents. I can't with these kids. Maybe you're a Washington Commanders fan, and you're like, I can't root for this team one more season. 
And somehow we, we say, I can't, I can't, I can't. And we get a bad case of the I can't. Who's ever had a bad case of the I can'ts? We have a bad case of the I can'ts. And so that's why I named today's message, Find Your Possible Again. So I need you to all tell three people, so you're saying there's a chance? <laughs> tell three people, so you're saying, saying there's a chance. Come on, talk. It's okay. <laughs> All right, come back to me. Some of you are like trying to ask somebody out on a date right now. Look, anything's possible. Um, hey, my goal, my, goal, my goal today is super simple. My goal is not to move you from I can't, or I'm sorry, I can, no, I can't to I can. Let's get it right. My goal isn't to move you from I can't to I can. My goal is to move you from I can't to God can. That's my goal, okay? Because I really, really believe that your future, my future, our future can be better because God can. I believe your, your year this year can be better, not because you can, but because God can. Now, you might be sitting here like, oh, I didn't know Pastor Tony Robbins was our guest speaker today. <laughs> it's, po- it's a positive thinking thing. Like, well, are we going to like walk on coals afterwards? Like, well, I can Listen, no, 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 no. I, I am not Pastor Tony, and our memory verse today is not Tony Robbins 316, okay? This whole idea that God can is in the Bible. Now, I, I don't know if you know this, but there's, there's an I can't guy in the Bible. One, one day, this guy, you know, he comes to Jesus, and I kind of imagine him as hyper, and like he just kind of pyre walks up to Jesus, and he's like, Jesus, I want to I follow you. I want to like do all the things. I want to like follow you. I want to be on team Jesus. Like, what, what, what do I need to do? And Jesus kind of like brings it down. He's like, oh, that's great. That's great. Like, if you want to follow me, here's what you do. Here's what your life is going to look like. All this stuff. And the power walker guy's like, well, I can't do that. <laughs> that's, not, that's not possible. I, I, I can't do that. And, and then Jesus responds to him. And this is what Jesus says. This is in, by the way, if you don't have a Bible, free Bibles every Sunday at Bay Shore, right out in the lobby. I'm reading out of one of our free Bibles. But to the I can't guy, this is what Jesus says in Mark chapter 10, starting in verse 27. Humanly speaking, it is impossible. Womp womp. But, check this out, not with God. Now, let's read this last part together on three. One, two, three. Everything is possible with God. Everything is possible with God. I came to church today to tell somebody that we follow the God of possible. We follow the God of hope. And so, listen, on your own, you might not be able to be happy or get out of debt or, you know, pay the things off or find the, 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 the date, you know, or find the TV remote, whatever. But listen, if you're a Jesus follower, you're not on your own. You are not on your own. So if you walk in today and you're thinking, I can't, and everything is impossible, listen, you may not on your own, but God can. Jesus said that everything is possible with God. And so everybody say, I can, I can. find my possible. All right, just like the good old days when we thought everything was possible. So I just got three ideas for how you can move from I can't to God can. Three ways. Number one is this, and we'll put this on the screen. You got to hear God's promises. First off, hear God's promises. Now, um, I just need to hear from you all. Uh, where are my parents at in the room? Who, who, is, who is a kid or five Bo Dukes? Like, who's got some kids? All the t- tired people in the room. Someone raise up their kid. I like that. Just, just lift up your kid. <laughs> Right there. It's like Simba, like, ooh. (laughs) Listen, I'm going to give you one of my favorite parenting tips. Um, Now, before I give you this parenting tip, I've I've caught in some flack for this tip before. This is kind of a controversial tip in 2023. Like, you're not going to read about this on the mom blogs. You may not see it on the TikToks. You know, it may not even be legal. I'm not even sure, actually. Um, but before I tell you my tip, I'm a, I'm a kid that grew up in the 1900s. <laughs> Who grew up in the 1900s? Like, you grew up in, the, in, the, yeah, in that century. Listen, in the 1900s, we didn't wear helmets. Come on, who knows about it? We didn't wear seat belts. You know what we did? We wanted to be in the bed of the pickup truck. That, like, that's where we wanted to ride. 
And if you had to sit in the pickup truck, you know what they did and the, they designed the vehicles? They would put a cigarette lighter at eye level for children. <laughs> Come on, who played with a cigarette lighter as a kid? You just burn things. So listen, just keep that in mind when I tell you my parenting tip and like in 2023, you're like, ah, oh, okay, just relax, breathe. I grew up in the 1900s, all right? This is not nearly as bad as cigarette lighters for children, okay? Um, but when my daughter Nora was born, I found out real quick that a, a crying baby is the worst sound in the world. Now you might be like, oh, no, 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 it's, it's cute. No, it's not. You might be like, well, they just cry because they need something. Yeah, I need something too. I needed, and I bought noise-canceling headphones. <laughs> listen, and listen, I promise you, this is my parenting tip. If you got a newborn kid, buy yourselves noise-canceling headphones. <laughs> buy expensive ones. Go into debt. Forget what Dave Ramsey says. Like, buy, put these on a credit card. <laughs> because like Nora, like when she, she start crying, you know, she's fussy, maybe a little gassy. I don't know what's going on. You know, I tried to work out all the things. But after I couldn't work out all the things, I would just get this out. <laughs> Woo! I, listen, game changer. I just hold her, and she'd be like, Wah! and I'd be like, And I, see, I can see the, you 20, 23 parents right now. You're looking at me like, I can, you, can't, that's a, you can't do that. Listen, when I grew up, my elementary school principal, he had a paddle in his office the size of the Titanic with holes drilled on it for maximum velocity. <laughs> Our kids can handle headphones. I love my headphones, all right? And so... I still have, these are mine, and so I still wear them because my house is loud. And so like, like last Sunday after church, I was at home, I was watching football on my iPad, had my headphones on, I was living my best life. But what I didn't know is that my wife was having a whole conversation with me in the next room over. <laughs> and so she just walks in and she just looks at me like this. <laughs> Which is universal language for like, you, you done messed up and you don't even know what you did. <laughs> and she looks at me and she's like, do you even know what I just said? Now, men, at this moment, you have a choice. You can either own it, which we never do, or you can roll the dice and just take a guess, right? I'm like, oh, for 3,257 for making the right guess, but I'll make a guess every time. Anyway, my point is this. These are great when you have a newborn, not so great when you, your wife is talking to you and you can't hear. Um, but sometimes we don't hear what we need to hear the first time men. I'm maybe talking to us. So sometimes we don't hear, we need, we need a little reminder. We need a little like, can you say that again? We need a little like, hear, hear an aid. And so we don't hear it the first time. Now, and here's something I, I want you to hear. This is like, this is biblical. Us men not hearing things the first time. It's been going on for thousands of years. There's this guy in the Bible. He's iconic. His name is Abraham. Everybody say Abraham. Abraham. Abraham's iconic. He's got two names, Abram or Abraham. Okay, and Abraham, Abraham, you know him. If you're like a, you know, went to Sunday school, he's, you know, Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Now, this time with hand motions. I'm just kidding. Don't. <laughs> that, that guy is Abraham. All right? Now, before Abraham had many sons... In Genesis 12, God promises him that he's going to have many sons, okay? But I don't think Abraham or Abram heard it very well. He's got two names in the Bible, Abraham and Abram. Like, I think he had his noise canceling headphones or something because, again, in Genesis 15, God tells him, hey, I I'm going to bless you with, you know, this, this blessing in your life. So let's pick up there. It says Genesis chapter 15, starting in verse 1. It says, sometime later, which is a generous way of like three chapters later, Genesis 12, Genesis 15, 15, the Lord spoke to Abram or Abraham again for the second time in a vision. And he said to him, do not be afraid, Abram, for I will protect you. And your, your what? Your war, reward will be great. In other words, God's like, Abram, Abraham, I need you to hear this this time. Okay, Father Abraham, turn up your hearing aid. I want you to hear this. I promise you, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to do something for you that's, you know, your dream for you, but it's also my dream for you. I am going to bless you. Can you hear me now? Now, here's why I tell you that. 
I don't think that we can rehear God's promises enough. I don't think, I don't think we can. Like, like, for instance, God wants to bless his kids, period. Take it to the bank, end the story. That is God's promise to us. He wants to bless our, bless his kids. Now, I can't rehear that enough because when I was growing up, I kind of thought God was an angry cop. I kind of thought of him like, officer, God's going to get you. And I thought, like, officer, God was going to get you, was behind every tree watching me, and he was just waiting for me me to mess up so he could, like, jump out from the tree and be like, I got you. You messed up, Joel. Here's your ticket. You're going to the hot place. Congratulations. (laughs) Did anybody, have you ever, like, imagined God kind of like, is is it just me? So that's kind of what I thought. And I, I, listen, (laughs) I just want to tell you, God is not like an angry police officer. Nothing against police officers, like, but God is not an angry police officer. God wants to bless you more than he wants to write you a citation. Did you know that uh, in the book of Genesis, that when God talks to people for the very first time, in Genesis 1.22, the very first thing that it says when God talks to people is it says, God blessed them. First thing. Do you know the word blessed shows up more in the book of Genesis than any other book in the entire Bible? It's like right out of the gate, God's like, hey, I need you to know something about me. I am the God that loves to bless my kids. Now, you got to give them something to bless, but God loves to bless us. Like, he, he, he is a loving father who wants to bless you more than he wants to write you a citation. I just want you to know that. Now, every, every parent in the room should get this, all right? Because, like, it's hardwired in me to want to, like, bless my kids. Like, for instance, uh, my daughter, Nora, she's, she's our godly child, (laughs) which makes Nixon, let's move on, okay? But uh, uh, in December, in the month of December, um, Nora, she had like a bad day for once in her life, and she got in a lot of trouble, and she like lost her dessert for that night, okay? And it was, the reason I know it was in December is because uh, on Tuesdays in December, Wawa gave out free coffee on Tuesdays. Come on, who, know, who knows about that? Who did the wild? Yeah, yeah, all the cheap skates in the room. <laughs> so every Tuesday, we had a family tradition. We'd all load up in the family van or you know, my car, and we would go to Wawa on Tuesday nights to get free hot chocolate because we're cheap skates in our family. And it was like the biggest thing the kids looked forward to, but the, the day that Nora got in trouble was Tuesday. And so the hot chocolate is dessert for us. And so like all day, I'm like, Nora, you, you can't get the hot chocolate tonight. And she was like all day, oh, daddy, please, like, please, please. And I'm like, no, you can't. I'm like, Hel- I held the line, parents. I held the line. <laughs> so we go to Wawa. And in Wawa, Nora doesn't ask at all for hot chocolate. She just follows me around like a sad puppy. <laughs> and I can resist kids. I cannot resist sad puppies, okay? So I, sa- I said, Nora, you have been good 99.9% of your life. Your brother, different percentages, okay? But I said, just get yourself a hot chocolate. And I can't, which is a parenting mistake. Just, saw, just put it out there. I, mean, I messed up. But I just want to bless my kids. It's hardwired in me. And I want you to know, God wants to bless his kids. Like I said, you got to give him something to bless, but he wants to bless his kids. Now, just disclaimer, he doesn't want to bless you just to make you happy. (laughs) Kind of like I was doing with Nora in the Wawa, okay? God wants to bless you to accomplish his purposes. Now, that might be the best part because God's plans and purposes and dreams for you are better than your plans and purposes and dreams for you. Abraham wanted a kid. God wanted to bless him with eight kids. Abram wanted a, f- a family. God wanted to give him nations. Listen, God's dreams for you are better than your dreams for you. And maybe you've lost your dream. Maybe you lost your, your possible. May- maybe you need to rehear God's promises. And so I just, I just wrote down some of God's promises that I want some of you guys to like rehear. Maybe you've heard this before, but we'll just kind of walk through these. We'll put these on the screen. You might be thinking to yourself, there won't be enough. There won't be enough money. There's not enough time. If you're single, you're like, there's not enough single men who love Jesus who have a job. (laughs) But listen, Jesus promises, I will provide. And all the single ladies are like, oh, thank the Lord. (laughs) Maybe it's this one for you, all right? We'll put the next one on the screen. Maybe you think the future is hopeless. You know why you think that? Because you're watching the news. Their business motto is to freak us out, and it works. Um, but 
God promises in Psalm 33, 1, my plans still stand. Listen, nothing can change God's plans. Not Putin, not politics, and not the news. So God's plans still stand. Maybe it's this for you. You think, I'm I'm all alone. Well, the best gift that God gives us in the entire Bible is that I will be with you. You're not alone. And then the last one is this. Maybe you feel like I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed at work. I'm overwhelmed at home. If you're a Steelers fan, you're overwhelmed because you didn't make the playoffs. I'm not overwhelmed. I'm very happy. Um, but Jesus says, if you come to me, you're overwhelmed. I will give you rest. And the Steelers are resting today, okay? They ain't playing. Anyway. Sorry. All right, let's move on. This isn't about football, but it's always about football. Um, but I want, you to, I want you to hear this. This, this is who God is. This, he's not some angry guy trying to write you a citation like these are his promises. And this is why you can find your possible again. Jesus is the one who said, with God, everything is possible. And so you got to hear God's promises. The second idea is this. If you want to go from I can't to God can, you have to say your dreams out loud. To say your dreams out loud. Now, I don't, I don't know if you know this, um, but I love kids because kids are dreamers. I saw this uh, on the internet this week. We'll, we'll put this on the screen. Um, this kid had to write his one wish, and he wrote, my one wish is for it to rain tacos. <laughs> this kid gets it. It's like you get one wish, clearly taco raining. <laughs> like, would you just send the chalupas, Lord? Like, I just want... I, lo- I love that kids can dream so much. Now, um, recently, my boy Nixon has a dream. And, and here's how it came. It kind of came out of a disappointment. The, the day after Christmas, this kid in our neighborhood, his name is Noah, he rode by our house on the day after Christmas on his Razor MX400 electric dirt bike. I think we have a picture that we'll put up. This. Noah rode by on the Razor dirt bike like, huh. And my boy Nixon sees this and he... He forgot about all 917 Christmas gifts that he got. And this is what he said. He said, Daddy, why didn't Santa get me that? And I said, because Sandy's on the budget, little buddy. Santa ran out of money, okay? Um, but Noah's a super sweet kid who just spends part of the time. He lives in Maryland, but like he spends holidays at, you know, on our road. And so all Christmas week, he, he let Nixon ride this dirt bike all day, every day. Just riding up and down the road. Nixon was, it was raining tacos in Nixon's life. He was living his dream. And then Noah went back home to Maryland and the dirt bike went with him. And ever since then, Nixon has told me his dream every single day. Daddy, I want a Razor MX400 electric dirt bike. Daddy, I, I need an MX400 electric dirt bike. Now, I'm all for it, okay? But he's got to buy it. But there's good news, okay? He can make money by doing chores in our house. Um, unfortunately, the maximum wage that he can get is $3 a week. <laughs> and that's out of, after a pretty significant cost of living adjustment that he got recently. <laughs> but in as little as 1,027 weeks, this can be all his. So I've just put it out there. I'm like, well, Nixon, why don't you sell some things, okay? Like, you can sell some things. I've even given him a great idea. Let's sell the family hamster. <laughs> Mr. Nibbles, he's got to be worth something. <laughs> Which, by the way, if, you, if anybody, like, is in the market for a two-year-old hamster whose average life expectancy is two years, we should talk, okay? Like, we need to talk soon because Mr. Nibbles isn't going to make it much longer, all right? Um, but I'm like, hey, he does sell some stuff. And, and Nixon's like, I don't know about that. But my, I do know. My dream is I want a Razor MX400 electric dirt bike. And he wants it. And so he just says it out loud to me all the time. And my question to you is this. Kids can do that, like say their dreams. When was the last time you said your dreams out loud? When was the last time you like, Put it out there. And like I said earlier, your dreams could be anything, okay? It could be like, hey, I want to, you know, find a date. I want to, you know, have kids. Maybe you want to find somebody to watch your kids so you can go on a date. 
Maybe you want to start your own business. Maybe your dream is, I just want to sit on the couch and do nothing all day for one day in my life. That's right. Yeah. Yes, Lord have mercy. Logan's like, I got kids. Can I do that? Um, but when's the last time you said your dream out loud? Now, now, for Abraham, he said his dream out loud, and his dream was he just wanted to have a child with his wife, Sarah. Now, that seems like a reasonable dream until you know that Abraham was a hundo, which means a hundred years old. His nickname was Mr. Century. So, like, this is too old to have kids, right? Well, anything's possible. And so let, let, let me show you um, Genesis 15, starting in verse 2. Watch what Abraham did. He said, O oh, sovereign Lord, what good are all your blessings when I don't even have a, a what? Son. Now, <laughs> didn't really nail it on his approach here. Kind of came in hot. <laughs> but what he did right <laughs> is that Abraham, he said his dreams out loud. So listen to God's response. Then the Lord took Abram outside and said to him, Look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. And Abraham believed the Lord. Interesting. This, don't miss this. Abraham had a dream. And he said it out loud. Again, when was the last time you said your dream out loud? Like you put it out there. You told God about it. You just put it out there. It, it kind of reminds me of when I was a 10-year-old. One of the greatest movies of all time came out. And I think we have a picture we'll put on the screen. Aladdin. Come on. Who, who just went back to the good old days? Right, right then? Woo! And this is, this is not like the Will Smith one. No, no, forget that mess. This is the old one. Robin Williams, the best. When I was 10 years old, this movie came out. And every 100% of my friends spent 100% of our time trying to figure out what our three wishes would be. And every one of us came up with the first same first one. Is we wish for unlimited wishes. And then some no fun adult said, that's against the rules. Like, you know the genie rules. You don't know. <laughs> anyway, I tell you that because I do not want to mislead anybody. God is not our genie in a bottle. Like, you can't just be like, I want to be a rock star. <sighs> Poof. And you're like Axl Rose or Gun, what? I don't know. Like, God is not our genie in the bottle. We work for him. He doesn't work for us. Genesis 1 1 says, In the beginning, God. Not in the beginning, you. Some of you are like, Oh, this is discouraging. But listen, <laughs> God is not our genie in the bottle. But hear this He wants to hear your dreams and passions because He planted some of those in you. And he may give you your dreams and passions just like he did Abraham. And he may not give you some of your dreams and passions. But if he doesn't give you your dreams and passions, again, good news, God's dreams for you are better than your dreams for you. And I don't want to, like, freak anybody out. <laughs> but this is not, was not my dream for me. <laughs> actually, I'm a preacher's kid, okay, a PK. My dream was actually to not be a pastor, you know what my dream was? It's a true story. My dream was I wanted to work for UPS corporate. Huh. Give me the brown shorts, man. I went to school for business, went to college for business. I got a graduate degree. I have an MBA, business stuff. I thought I'm going to go work for UPS. I'm going to get out of Gumboro. That's my plan. And God was like, cool. I'm going to have you work in a church in Gumboro. And listen, when I found out it's playing, I'm like, no, 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 I, no, God. I, I think I'm the victim of identity theft. <laughs> I'm not, no, 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 this is not, you met, you met my friend Andy over here. My friend, this is my friend Andy, okay, he went to school since sixth grade. He, goes, he should be the pastor. Andy, listen, Andy had the entire book of the Bible memorized by like age 10. Andy doesn't even listen to Guns N' Roses. It's like, he should be the pastor. <laughs> and God's like, I got my plans for Andy, but I want you to lead a church. Trust me. And I'm just going to be honest with you, I'm so glad I did, because being your all's pastor is, is the honor of my life. It is. And let me just tell you, I know personally that God's plans for me were better than my plans for me. And so maybe God doesn't give you your dreams and your passions, but just trust him, embrace it, work with what you have, because I now know that God's plans for me were better than my plans for me. Maybe 
God does give you your dreams, and kudos to you. That's amazing. But whatever your dreams are, say it out loud. Put it out there. Pray about it. Tell God about it. Tell your friends about it. Tell the cashier at the Aldi about it. As long as you're not lying in front of me, all right? Other than that, you can do it. But you can't find your possible if you can't find a way to possibly say it out loud. And I, I just, this isn't in my notes, but like this has just kind of hit me this morning. Tomorrow is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And he had a really famous speech. I have a dream. Aren't you glad he said that dream out loud? I mean, we got a long ways to go in racial reconciliation, but man, I'm so thankful that that man had a dream and he spoke it out loud and he changed history and is still changing because he put his dream out loud. That's for free. That wasn't in my notes. Okay. <laughs> last idea is this. Three ways to go from I can't to God can. His last idea is remember Jesus is how you can be sure that anything's possible. So um, I was thinking about the good old days this week, and I thought about my first car. Come on, who, who remembers your first? You remember that first car? How many of you drove a clunker for your first car? Let me see your hand. You drove a clunker? That's right. The rest of you must be nice, okay? <laughs> my first car, I don't have a picture, but it was a 1989 Honda Accord. Huh. Rusted outside panel, missing hubcaps. Babe magnet. <laughs> My second car was a 1997 Honda Accord that I found out later after I bought it was totaled and it pulled to the right like you couldn't, I mean, that's why I had a big right bicep, okay? Um, but guess who I dated in that car? My smoking hot wife, all right? <laughs> Babe magnet, all right? <laughs> so the first two cars worked out so good. My third car was a 2007 Honda Civic. White, efficient, manly. <laughs> I love that car. Um, until one day I was driving through Long Neck. I was on Route 24, the Devil's Highway. <laughs> and my car overheated. <laughs> and I pulled over. There's all this liquid pouring out of the engine. And you might be like, well, what kind of liquid was it? Was it the coolant? Was it the oils? Was it the, you know... Uh, Transmission juice. Listen, I don't know. I'm, I'm a, I don't know even what button to push at the gas station. I don't know what was coming out of the car. I know I took it to the mechanics. And the mechanic called me a few days later, and he's like, well, you got, you got a crack in your engine block. You cracked your engine block. And I was like, oh. I was like, can you just, how about you just, can you say that again, slower, just, and explain it like I'm a newborn child. And he's like, your engine blew, and your car is totaled. My car had 97,000 miles on it. Engine cracked, engine blown, okay? And so he's like, I can't do anything for you. The only thing I can tell you is, like, maybe take it to a Honda dealer, and maybe there's this off chance that it's under warranty, or there's a recall on the engine, but probably not. I'm like, you're not very much into the positive thinking, sir. But I took my car to the mechanic's. I'm sorry, to, not the mechanics. It was at the mechanics. I took it to Pohanka Honda in Salisbury. A few days later, the lady calls, and she's like, you, you done cracked your engine block. I'm like, I know. And she said, well, good news. Because the crack is in a certain place on your engine, and because your engine has under 100,000 miles on it, there is a recall because the en Honda engines have been cracking right in that place. And as long as it's there and under 100,000 miles, and you have 97,000 miles, we're going to put a brand new engine in your car for free. That really happened, okay? 100% happened. And I don't know if you've ever gotten such good news that you said the wrong thing back. Like, has this ever happened to you? <laughs> She's like, you're getting a free engine. And I said, are you sure? <laughs> if anybody ever offers you a free engine, you just shut your mouth, okay? You, like, you go play the lottery is what you do right then, all right? You just like, oh, thank you. I'm going to play the lottery now, okay? So, but... The news was so good. Like, I don't know if this has ever happened. Like, you get such good news. You're like, are you sure? Are you sure? Like, the, like, for instance, like, the Ravens made it to the playoffs. Are you sure? <laughs> Have you seen how we've been playing? Like, I mean, we're not Steelers bad. They didn't make it. But, like, are we sure? Sorry, it just keeps coming out. Um, it's, it's festering. It's got to get. Anyway, so 
But like good news, like are, are you sure? So listen, Abraham gets this good news from God. Like you're going to have all these kids. It's like going to be the Waltons for you. It's going to be the Duggars. It's going to be the Duke's family. You know, what? there's so many kids coming your way. And so listen to what Abraham responds, okay? Abraham replied, O sovereign Lord, how can I be what? Sure. How can I be sure that I will actually possess it? Everybody say, are, are you sure? It's like sometimes like good news is like so good. It's like, are, are you sure? And for Abraham, biologically, this was impossible. I mean, he was a hundred. He was Mr. Century. Can, can you imagine having a newborn baby at your hundredth birthday party? Good news, if you have to borrow a diaper... Sorry if I offended you because you're 100, but <laughs> this is impossible. Like, this is too good to be true. But guess what? After Abraham had Isaac at 100, he kept on having kids. And as crazy as that is, what's even crazier is about 2,000 years later, I just want to read you the very first verse of the entire New Testament. Matthew 1, 1. All right, so this is 2,000 years after all this happened, Abraham finally like had a, a kid in a family tree, impossible happened. It says, this is a record of the ancestors of Jesus, the Messiah. So this is like 23andMe, this is Ancestry.com, like this is who is related to Jesus, okay? A descendant, Jesus was a descendant of David and of who? Abraham. The, Abraham. Somehow childless, hopeless, it's not possible, Abraham became, be, ended up being a direct descendant of Jesus. That's impossible. That's crazy, which is why I came to church to tell somebody anything's possible. Anything is possible. Whatever is your impossible right now, I want you to find your possible again because Jesus is how you can be sure that anything it's possible. And so I just wrote down some things this week that I want you to know that is impossible that Jesus made possible for us. So just kind of lean into this. Because Jesus walked to earth, God will walk with you. Because Jesus shared the truth, you and I can know the truth. Because Jesus was hated and rejected by people, you can be loved and accepted by God. Because Jesus was born, you can be born again. Because Jesus was wounded, you can be healed because Jesus was abandoned. You can never be alone because Jesus was a punishment or was given a punishment he didn't deserve. You get a reward that you don't deserve because Jesus never sinned. Your sins are wiped clean because Jesus gave up his life. He can give you new life because Jesus is your protector. No weapon formed against you shall prosper because Jesus is your savior. The doors of heaven are wide open to you. That's what he promises you. And you might say, are you sure? <laughs> like, do you know how jacked up I am? <laughs> to which I would say, do you know who attends church here? Do you know who you're sitting next to? Do you know who your pastor is? Like, you're going to be good. You're going to fit right in. <laughs> but it's hard to believe that Jesus would accept us. That's, that's too good to be true. But then I think about what Jesus said that we opened up the whole service with. Jesus, a direct descendant of Abraham, the whole character of today. Jesus said this in Mark 10, 27. Humanly speaking, it is impossible, but not with God. Everything is possible with God. So I hope you find your possible this year. And if you're struggling to find it, just remember God's promises. Say your dreams out loud and just remember what Jesus has done in your life. And that is just a reminder that anything is possible. And if you are a Jesus follower and you're so thankful that he did the impossible by accepting you, would you just like say amen or clap your hands or something? Like, it's, it's the best news. And if you're here and, and maybe you're new to church or new to Jesus, I just want to tell you the best way you can start to find your possible is to find Jesus. It's to find him. And I want to give you an opportunity to do that. So if you guys wouldn't mind bowing your heads and closing your eyes as we close out 
and prayer. Maybe you're here today and you're like, man, I don't know. Like, are you sure God would accept me? That seems impossible. That seems too good to be true. That's the story of grace. That's the story of Jesus. And so if you're here and you're like, hey, I want to accept Jesus for the, for the first time. I want, I want to accept that impossible. All I want you to do when no one's looking around, just kind of slip your hand up so I can see you, but nobody else is looking around. If you want to accept Jesus, if you want to put him in your life, accept that impossible, just raise your hand. I see so many hands going up in this place. And I love that because Jesus said, if you will acknowledge me before my Father, I'll acknowledge you. And so now that you've acknowledged him, he's going to acknowledge you when you stand in front of God one day and you step into your future. And so if you just pray this prayer with me, everybody just raise their hand and everybody who is already a Jesus follower, let's just say this together. Dear Jesus, thank you for accepting me. I know I'm a sinner and it seems impossible that you would offer me grace. But you did on a cross And I accept your salvation. I pray for your forgiveness. And I'm going to follow you. Thank you for making anything possible. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Guys, I don't know, 15 people or so just accepted Jesus. So I think we should get excited about that right there. I love that.